Hariyom. Welcome, Mana TV International's gang of yogis. We're here again to work with sun salutation today, <clears throat> but today we're going to add some variations to the sun salutations. And <clears throat> uh, Parvati will be able to do some things which not everyone's going to be ready to do. And so please only do the things that are fitting for you. It's okay to skip things always. And today we're going to do some things which will be fitting for everyone, but some things will not be fitting for everyone. But they'll be fun. And for those of you who can do the th everything that Parvati does today, you'll really enjoy it and you'll benefit from it. So <clears throat> please just take in a breath and join us for an Om. Parvati, thank you for getting set up about a foot back from the front of the mat. Let's do one real sun salutation, very simple and fluid to start, and then we'll add some variations in the next few rounds. So have the feet rather close, palms together in front of the chest, breath flowing, body upright, but saw, fluid. Now sweep the arms forward, thumbs touching and interlace and arch back, floating the hips forward, spread the chest, lengthen and hinge forward, push the buttocks back, lengthen through the spine, bring the hands down next to the feet, step the left foot way back, left knee on the floor, push the hips forward, look up and step the right foot back next to the left, push through the palms, stretch through the heels, look toward the feet. Please lower the knees, chest and chin with the hips raised and the elbows pointed toward the sky. Don't let the feet move, slide the belly forward, lower the pelvis, raise the head, neck and chest, pull the shoulders back, press up a little more, and then press back to the downward facing dog, the inverted V, looking toward the feet. Go ahead and step that left foot all the way up in between the hands, right knee down, hips forward, look up. And now step the right foot forward and flatten the backs of the legs. Sweep the arms out front, press the buttocks back as you come up, float the hips forward as you arch back, and come on up, palms together in front of the chest, soften the body, be centered, breathe through the nostrils, and be so happy. <laughs> Very good. Okay, so now we're going to add some things as we go through this. In this first round that we're doing this time, we're going to lead back with the right leg first rather than the left leg. And <clears throat> just something worth noting, would you do a favor and just come down into the equestrian pose with the right foot back? So when you step the right foot back, you're squeezing the left side. And reverse it, please. When you step the left foot back, you're squeezing the right side and now come back to standing and just help people see in general you want to squeeze the right side first which means stepping the left side back and then you go over and squeeze the left side and this moves the energy through the colon to keep you regular regular is good so we always end our series of sun salutations leading with the left leg back first. But we just did that. We started with the left leg and we'll end with the left leg as the lead. But this time we're going to lead with the right leg. I just wanted you to understand the benefits of leading with the left leg and you ending with that round to just be regular. Regular's really good. So here we go. Palms together in front of the chest. Breathe, happy, 
Sweep the arms forward and arch back. Float the hips out front. Now hinge forward just to 90 degrees. Spread the fingers wide and pull the elbows and hands back. Press the buttocks back. Bring the chest and chin forward. Chin forward. Go ahead. Look forward. Pull those elbows back. Lengthen. Feel the lower back stretching open. Once again, stretch the arms forward and come down. Now, <clears throat> you might want to grab hold of the big toes if you're as limber as, as Parvati, but otherwise, and even if you are this limber, you also may like to grab hold behind the ankles or calves. And if your hands go behind the heels or ankles, you can put the forearms behind the calves and get a super squeeze that feels so good as you breathe into it. Okay, please place the palms down next to the feet and go ahead, step the right foot back and don't put the, don't put the knee down. First, just stretch out through the heel and now raise the torso and turn the back foot and plant it. We're going to do the warrior one pose. So reach up. In warrior one, the chest is facing front and the hips are pressing in toward the center. You look up, you reach up from the waist up, going up from the waist down, sinking down. And you'd like to have a 90 degree angle between the, the thigh and the shin, but you don't want to bend down so much that the knee would go in front of the toes. Don't ever let that happen when you're in this pose. There's too much weight on the knee there and you could injure it. But as long as the knee doesn't go in front of the toes, you're safe. Now open the arms out and rotate into warrior two. Put the arms over the legs. Arms are the same height. You spread the chest and look out over the front arm. Now this time the hips are pulling wide apart. You're spreading the hips open. Looking over the front arm, bring the attention up to the head and aim. That's an important part of the posture, the energy moving from the head, gazing out over the arm. Now, once again, uh, come back to the center, reach up and bring the palms together in front of the face, chest and down framing the front foot, turn the back foot, put the knee down and put the toes back on the back foot and raise the torso for the Anjaneyasana, the monkey pose. And now normally you just push the hips down and lengthen through the spine, spread the chest a little, arch back some. But if you're going to arch back as far as Parvati, you have to have a very loose back. Something else you can do is you can push a little off the front foot to go back even further. And come on up, palms together in front of the face, chest, hands framing the front foot, curl the toes under, and go ahead and step the left foot back next to the right. Beautiful. This is the downward facing dog. Now we're going to go into upward facing dog in a simple fashion this time. Keep the arm straight and the leg straight and leaning forward, lower the hips and look up. Tighten the buttocks some, push the belly out, pull the shoulders back, spreading the chest, lengthen through the neck and look up, belly pushing forward. This is upward facing dog. And then press back to the downward facing dog. Beautiful. Now as we move into the knees, chest, chin, the eight point pose, we're going to include one other thing. We're going to include the crocodile pose, chaturanga. So, Keep the elbows squeezing in as you bend the elbows lower down to a push-up. The body's about an inch off the ground and you're looking at the floor. Everything's firm and tight. You're about an inch off the floor. Now to move into the eight-point pose, raise the buttocks some, lower the knees, chest and chin and soften the back. Go ahead and let the right hip fall to the side and just release the spine. Now back up to center and let the left hip fall to the side, release the spine. Once again, back up to center. Now don't let the feet move back, slide the pelvis forward, lower it and raise the head, neck and chest. Good. Now <clears throat> go ahead, bring the arms behind the back and interlock the fingers. 
Now lift the arms up and the chest up. Arms up, chest up. Breathe with it. Go ahead, let go of the hands. Put the hands on the ground next to the chest on the floor and press up another inch, tightening the buttocks some and press back to downward facing dog. Very nice, very nice. Go ahead and stretch the right, uh, the left leg back and up toward the sky and just reach high. Tuck the chin into the chest, push through the palm, stretch out through the right heel and bring that left leg a little higher as you breathe with it. Now bring the left foot down and we'll switch sides. Now the right leg back and up. Again, tuck the chin, push into the palm, stretch out through the left heel. As you breathe, keep lengthening and lifting. Beautiful. And bring the foot down. Take a breath. And we're gonna step into that warrior pose. Go ahead, step the right foot all the way up in between the hands. Stretch, wait, don't plant yet. Just stretch out through the heel for a moment. And now raise the torso and plant the foot. Warrior one, the hips are squeezing in as your chest is facing forward. You're stretching up from the waist up, sinking down from the waist down. And then open up into warrior two. The hips are pulling wide open. The chest is open. Turn the head, look over the front arm and bring the attention up to the head and aim. You want your arms long more than back, just lengthening, as long as it'll go. Once again, face the front, warrior one, and then the palms down in front of the face and chest and down framing the front foot, turn the back foot, put the knee down, look up, and take the toes on the back foot and put them back, and we'll go into Anjaneyasana, raise the torso, initially push the pelvis down toward the heel and lengthen as you arch back, don't be shocked if you don't go as far back as Parvati. In fact, if you go back as far as Parvati, you can be delightfully shocked. <laughs> Come on up, palms together in front of the face and chest, hands next to the front foot, curl the toes under, and go ahead and step forward, please. Now, <clears throat> lifting the toes up, take the thumb and rub up and down in between the toe and the the big toe and the next toe and then go in between each pair of toes not just on top of them go in between up and down this will help to move the lymph through the body and then we're going to stand on the hands so literally stand on the hands so the toes are almost touching the wrist try to flatten the legs as much as they will pushing into the heels and then tucking the chin Push the elbows out and roll them forward a little, rounding the back as you breathe extra deeply. Beautiful. Now release the hands, please. And this time, sweep the arms out to the sides as you blossom up, kind of a reverse swan dive. Float the hips forward, arch back, soften the knees, spread the chest, and come on up. Palms together in front of the chest, soften everything, be centered. Ah. Beautiful, beautiful. Very nice. So we're going to do one more round. In this next round, we're going to be adding things that won't be fitting for a lot of folks. You need to be somewhat advanced and, and your body rather limber and your practice somewhat developed to do some of the things we're about to do in your practice. But you can try them, but if they don't work, please don't do them. Here we go. Palms together in front of the chest. Breath flowing, body upright and soft. Sweep the arms forward, arch back, float the hips out front, soften the knees. Hinging forward, bring the hands down. <clears throat> and once again, go ahead and step the left foot back this time into the warrior one pose. Raise up. Open into warrior two. And take the back hand to the back leg and raise the front arm up and stretch out through the front side. Don't forget to keep the front knee bent. Lengthen. Come on up. 
and place the hands framing the front foot. Oh wait, we're going to do one more thing here. Go ahead and tuck the right arm under the right leg and bring the left arm over the back and grab the hands and look up. Pull that left shoulder back, breathe with it, push into the outside of the back foot. Beautiful. And go ahead, let go, and come up. Step the, put the knee down, toes back. Beautiful. And now please go ahead and step the right foot back next to the left. Come into downward facing dog again. So we are going to come to the eight point pose in a moment, but before we do, we're going to do a flying cobra. For this, keep the arms straight initially and squat, bending the knees, squat back toward the heels. The knees are about an inch off the floor and then bending the arms, thrust forward into that crocodile pose and then straighten the arms and come into upward facing dog. This is known as the flying cobra and press back to downward facing dog. We're going to do the Ekapada Raj Kaputasana, the one legged king pigeon pose here. So please Parvati, bring the right knee up in between the hands, the right foot over to the left side, please. And lower the hips. And you want to have the foot as close to a 90 degree angle as possible for balance sake, but mostly just don't have it pulled back toward the hip. Have it out somewhat. The pelvis is squared and centering down. Now go ahead and pull the hands back. Oh wait, come forward please and stretch long. Pull with the fingertips, pull back with the back foot and lengthen the spine and push the pelvis toward the floor. This is wonderful for the hips. Now walk the hands back, torso up and bring the hands back as far as they'll go, palms facing backwards. Spread the chest, lengthen through the neck and the crown of the head pulling toward the back heel. If you'd like and you're limber, you can bend that back leg and take hold of the foot. And if you're particularly limber, you can hold the foot to the head. You might do it with both hands if the balance is steady enough. Beautiful. Let the foot down, bring the arms forward, and this time instead of pulling, just soften, lounge kind of for a moment. And then bring the hands back and step back into downward facing dog and we'll do the other side immediately. Wiggle loose, then step the left knee up forward, the left foot over to the right side, lower the pelvis, keep them square, the hips. Stretch forward with the arms and back with the back leg and pull with the fingertips, pull back with the toes and back, press the hips toward the ground, breathe with it, and then go ahead, raise the torso as you walk the arms back, pull them way back, spreading the chest, lengthening, the pelvis still pushing toward the floor, crown of the head reaching toward the back heel, and if you're comfortable, you can bend the knee and reach back for the foot. And go ahead, let the leg down, bring the arms forward, and this time just lounge, soften. Mm. And once again, hands back, step back into downward facing dog. You might have to bring the feet forward a little bit from that stretch. Good, good. And once again, Come into the knees, chest, chin, the eight point pose. And sliding forward. And 
please go ahead and demonstrate the Sphinx Pose. Slide the elbows forward, palms spread. The elbows are underneath the shoulders. They're, they're not out to the sides. The legs are close together and you look very Sphinx-like. This is how you prepare for the pose and then without moving the hands, straighten the arms, please. Tighten the buttocks a little as the arch moves down, lower on the back. And if you're comfortable, if your back is limber, you can walk the hands back some and keep arching back. Pulling the shoulders back, lengthening through the neck. Be careful not to crunch the neck back. You always want to lengthen the neck rather than crunch it back. Try another inch, now that the body's had a little time. Not with the neck, with the hands. <laughs> Thank you, Parvati. <laughs> and then <clears throat> lower down to Cobra again. And curl the toes under and press back to Downward Facing Dog. Very nice. Now this time, take the right leg back and up like we did last time. But we're going to open the hip up, so bend the knee and bring the knee up high toward the sky to open the hip. The foot's coming over toward the left side, and then you can take the right hand off the ground and bring that right foot down to the floor on the left side and stretch out beautifully, pushing through both feet, pushing through the palm on the ground, lengthening, breathing into it. It's a beautiful stretch. And then come back and step up and then bring the foot down and we'll do the other side. Take the leg back and up, stretch, bend the knee, open the hip, and then raise the left hand and bring the foot over to the right side, push through both feet, push through the hand in front, stretch out, breathe with it. And go ahead and step back. Come up, bring the foot down. Okay, beautiful. So go ahead and <clears throat> please step the left foot up in between the hands. Plant, come up to warrior one, open to warrior two, stretch out the side. The, Bring the hand down to the back leg, stretch out the front side, breathe with it, keep the hips down, the knee bent, and come on up and put the arm underneath and reach over the back, pull the shoulder back, look up, breathe with it, and straighten the arm, release the arm down, hands down. <clears throat> And go ahead and curl the toes under and step forward. Once again, you could hug the legs if you like, and you can reach around to the opposite leg from behind and hold the ankle and push the elbows forward, flattening the backs of the legs. Breathe with it. And now release the arms, push the buttocks back, bring the torso forward and up, and arching back. Beautiful. Come on up, palms together in front of the chest. Be soft and centered and happy. Mmm, beautiful. And let go. Thank you, Parvati. That was just awesome. Thank you, Parvati. We hope you've enjoyed seeing some of the things you can do with sun salutations, Surya Namaskara. There are a lot of things. And please note that when you're doing Surya Namaskara, you want to do at least one round very simple and fluid and let it flow. That's a, the real Surya Namaskaram. But you can do this vinyasa approach, this flowing approach where you 
use the pattern of Surya Namaskaram and add some things to it and hold them somewhat longer and really turn it into somewhat of a practice all on its own. Have fun with this. Do your yoga regularly. Be steady in your practice. Blessings, blessings. Om Om Asatoma Sadgamaya Tamasoma Jyotirgamaya Mrityor Mamritam Gamaya Om Shanti 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 Lead us from unreal to real Lead us from darkness to the light Lead us from the fear of death To knowledge of immortality Om Shanti 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 Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu Bless all dimensions of being with peace and joy, love and light. Victory to that light of truth which overcomes all darkness. Jai Sri Sadguru Maharaj Ki Please bow to the light in yourself. Bow to the very same light in everything and everyone. Adiyo, Tat Sat, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Blessings. Blessings. See you next time.